Of all the major characters in both the Kanto and Johto regions, some of the least known are undoubtedly the newcomers to the Elite Four in the Gen 2 games. Having looked at Karen last week, it's time to look at a trainer who is perhaps even less known and more mysterious. Will. And not just because of the mask. Let's be real for a second, there is a reason why he was voted in by you guys as the very last trainer that we cover in Phase 2 of this series. He can be immensely forgettable, and were it not for the fact that he's an Elite Four member, he'd almost seem kind of insignificant in many ways. But there's a reason for this. Will is a psychic type trainer who, at the time of Gen 2, seems to have very recently gotten a spot in the Pokemon League, probably sometime between 2 to 3 years after the events of Pokemon Red and Blue. Since he's the first trainer that we face, Will has the lowest ranking spot in the Elite Four, which makes sense since he's a newer addition. As he says when we first challenge him, I have traveled all around the world making my psychic Pokemon powerful, and at last I've been accepted into the Elite Four. His new position becomes even more interesting when we think about who it was that he actually replaced, Lorelei. If you'll remember from Lorelai's True Power episode, she had expressed to Red during the post-game that she was stuck in a dilemma between staying at home on Four Island and the Sevi Islands, citing worries about the safety of her hometown and family due to the remnants of Team Rocket having taken root there. Due to her replacement by Will, it seems that she actually did choose this path and gave up her position in order to protect Four Island. Strangely enough, Will has a lot of similarities to Lorelai. He also alternates between having red and purple hair, he has a few of the same Pokemon that she does, and he keeps the ice-themed room that she had, at least initially. Despite him having traveled all around the world, in the Adventures manga, Will is said to only be 22 years old during the events of Gen 2. And although his home region is not known, it's almost undoubtedly either Kanto or Johto since, of course, he is a member of the Indigo Plateau, which serves as the league for both of those two regions. Oh, and since this is apparently a subject of hot debate, yes, he does still have both of his eyes, despite some of his artwork seeming to indicate otherwise. This is confirmed in his Heart Gold and Soul Silver Overworld sprite. Just thought I'd clear that up. From what he tells us, it seems that Will has been fighting for a spot in the Elite Four for some time now, and due to the circumstances of him getting his position with Agatha's presumed retirement and Lorelai having given up her position, Will did get a freebie in a sense, and that's perhaps why he's so ambitious and feels that he really needs to prove himself and to others that he deserves the position nonetheless. He'll often say things like, I can only keep getting better, losing is not an option. And, even though I was defeated, I won't change my course. I will keep battling until I stand above all trainers. Despite his raw ambition, Will does have a sense of humility about him, as evidenced when he says, Now move on and experience the true ferocity of the Elite Four, implying that he knows he's not the best the Elite Four has to offer. As a young newcomer to the Elite Four, Will is roaring to go and we know he's powerful to have made it as far as he has. At least during the time of Gen 2, we know he must have been more powerful than his fellow psychic type trainer Sabrina, for instance, since he got the position and she didn't. But how powerful is he really? It's time to find out how strong Will really is by looking at all of his appearances in the main series games to construct his best possible team. It's time to find out his true power. The first time we can battle Will is in the Gen 2 games, Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, where he's the first Elite Four member that we face. After telling us what it took to get his new position, we're challenged to battle in which he starts off with a level 40 Zatu, followed by a level 41 Executor, a level 41 Slowbro, a level 41 Jinx, and finally a second Zatu at level 42. Like Lorelei, his team is actually fairly bulky and has lots of setup and utility moves like Confuse Ray, Reflect, Leech Seed, Curse, Amnesia, and Lovely Kiss that can make this battle quite a struggle if you're not adequately prepared ahead of time. Will is next found in the Gold and Silver remakes Hard Gold and Soul Silver, where he can actually be battled on two separate occasions, unlike the originals. Our first battle is under the same circumstances as the originals, where he serves as the first Elite Four member. Ironically enough, he has the same five Pokémon at the same levels, however they all of course have their abilities now, and his second Zatu now holds a Citrus Berry, making it a much tougher and bulkier challenge. However, Hard Gold and Soul Silver also gave us the opportunity to rematch Will after we've collected all 16 badges, in which he's become far more powerful with several new additions on his team, higher levels, great movesets, and a full team of 6 this time around. In this rematch, Will now starts off with a brand new level 58 Bronzong, followed by a new Jinx at level 60, a new Grumpig at level 59, his Slowbro now at level 60, a brand new Gardevoir at level 61, and finally one of his Zatus now at level 62, marking a massive average level development of about 20 from his other battles. It's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Using all of his appearances in the main series games, let's construct Will's best possible team. 
The number one spot on this best team is going to go to Will's Gardevoir, which is at level 61. In the Gen 8 full Pokedex metagame, Gardevoir is currently in the UU tier in competitive battling. In competitive, Gardevoir is mostly known for its Mega, which Will unfortunately is not confirmed to have access to, but it's still a good Pokemon with good speed, amazing special attack and special defense, and the awesome Psychic and Fairy typing. With moves that Will has on it like Calm Mind to raise its special attack and special defense even further, along with Stab Psychic and Focus Blast for coverage, and the potential for Stab Moon Blast now that it has the Fairy type and Mystical Fire for 75 damage with a guaranteed special attack drop on the opponent, Gardevoir serves as a great way to try encounter those pesky dark types which are otherwise quite a huge threat to his Pokemon. The second spot is going to go to Will's Bronzong which is at level 58 at the time of Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Bronzong is currently also in the UU tier and is a really awesome Pokemon overall that has been fairly underrated over the past few generations but is once again shining in the National Dex Gen 8 metagame. With an amazing ability in Heat Proof which gets rid of its fire weakness entirely, or Levitate to get rid of its ground weakness if Will has an ability capsule, along with really good steel and psychic typing, Bronzong can serve as a physical wall to tank incoming hits such as steel attacks on Gardevoir. Bronzong also has amazing defensive stats and surprisingly solid attack stats too, and with moves Moves like Stab Psychic, Reflect, and the potential for Heavy Slam, Toxic, Protect, and Stealth Rock for some hazard setup, Bronzong can really cause problems for most opposing teams. The third pick for Will's best team is going to go to his Slowbro, which is seen at its highest at level 60. Slowbro is currently in the RU tier in competitive battling and has amazing base stats with everything but its speed being between 75 and 110, and has particularly great HP, defense, and special attack, making it an option for a physical wall and or especially offensive tank on this team in great combination with Bronzong. With moves that Will has had on it like Stab Psychic, Stab Water Pulse, and Amnesia to raise its special defense, along with the potential for Stab Scald with a chance to burn, Flamethrower, or Ice Beam for fantastic coverage, and even Slack Off to recover its HP, Slowbro is an incredible tank and wall that can stop opposing teams in their track if they're not careful. The fourth choice is going to be Will's Jinx, which is at level 60 in its strongest appearance. Jinx is untiered, but in my opinion is honestly one of the more underrated Pokemon out there. Jinx's base stats aren't amazing, but it does have an insane special attack along with a good special defense and speed. With great stab moves that Will has on it like Psychic and Blizzard, along with the potential for Stab Ice Beam for more accuracy, Lovely Kiss to put the opponent to sleep, Shadow Ball for more coverage, and possibly even Nasty Plot via TR if Jinx ends up being put into Sword and Shield since Will unfortunately didn't breed it on it, Jinx can certainly pull off some surprises on this team and also add adds great ice coverage. The second last spot is going to go to Will's signature Pokemon, his Zatu from his Heart Gold and Soul Silver rematch team in which it's at level 62, making it his highest level Pokemon. Now normally Zatu would have gotten a higher placement on this team, but unfortunately Will doesn't have the Magic Bounce ability on it and can't put it on via Ability Capsule since it is a hidden ability. Nonetheless, Zatu still has some value with the Synchronize ability, and although its base stats aren't great with good special attack and speed, but everything else being mediocre, it does provide some flying coverage. With moves that Will has on it like Stab Psychic, Confuse Ray, and Shadow Ball, along with the potential for Stab Air Slash, Roost to heal health, Heat Wave, and U-Turn for pivoting, Zatu is a high-level Pokemon that can still cause a bit of trouble in battle. And the final pick for Will's best team is going to be his Grumpig, which is at level 59. Now Grumpig is also untiered and is definitely not known for being especially good and competitive, but it can add some value here. First, it has the Thick Fat ability which halves the damage taken by both Fire and Ice moves which will definitely be attempted against other Pokemon on this team, making it a decent switch in option. In terms of the stats that it actually needs to use, 80 to 110 base stats in everything but defense is quite good overall. Will already has a decent move set on it with Stab Psychic, Power Gem and Signal Beam for coverage, and Confuse Ray, but it could also benefit from moves like Calm Mind, Shadow Ball, Focus Blast, or Thunder Wave to cripple opponents. Although this is Will's best team, he does have a couple other Pokemon that are worth mentioning. The first is his second Zatu, which is seen at its highest at level 40, and unfortunately also doesn't have its hidden ability and would merely add more of the same weaknesses to this team. Will's Executor could be a decent chance for a bit more coverage, but its 4 times bug weakness is not ideal given the state of the rest of his team, and it was seen at its highest at level 41 anyway. 
Well, there we go, everyone. We have discovered Will's true power and unveiled his strongest possible team in the main series games. Given the monotype nature of it, it actually might perform fairly well aside from dark types and does have a couple options for coverage against it too. If Will has learned the power of Mega Evolution since the last time we saw him about 8 to 10 years ago, then he's got two great options in Gardevoir and Slowbro, but for now that remains to be seen. If you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to more from the series, please be sure to leave a like, share it on social media, and subscribe with notifications on by hitting that bell icon if you haven't already. All forms of support help a ton and are super appreciated. Don't forget to comment down below with what trainer you wish to see featured next. The comment with the most likes will pick the trainer for the next week's episode and will be featured on screen. Before we go, I'd just like to give a quick shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys so much for your support. If you enjoy my content and would like to support the channel and get some cool perks, the link to my Patreon page will be in the description below. This has been Soul Spectre, and I'll see you guys next time for some more true power.